Okay, so let's kick it off, Lady Ada, we're here. Wow, numbers. Do you love yeah. numbers? Everybody loves numbers. Well, you're going to love this new product. This is um, feather wings for feathers that have a four-digit seven-segment display on them. So let's say you wanted four blue digits, and you get like colon dots, you can make a clock, and you get decimal points. You can go with green, if you like green, green's your favorite color, or maybe red. Red? We got red, red's covered, white, a glorious bright white, and of course, yellow. So five different colors of this backpack. And what's nice about these backpacks is that it allows you to drive the seven segment displays using only two pins. So you have this PCB, and the PCB has a, a driver chip on it, this Holtec driver chip that's like really, really stable. Uh, it works with- You like, like these. I really like these chips, mostly because they're inexpensive compared to the Maxim chips, which are very high quality, but these are, these are on I2C, they do all the multiplexing for you. They, um, they work with like every chip that I've ever used and they can drive up to eight by 16 LEDs and it's just like, they're low cost, easy to pick in place, easy to use. Um, we've sold tens and tens and tens of thousands, I've never had a technical problem with them. They've always worked on every platform. They don't have any weird like I2C clock stretching or like requirements for the pull-ups, whatever they're, they're like rock solid. That's one thing about Holtec is their stuff is, it's, it, you know, it's go, it goes in everything. So it's very durable. Anyway, so mm -hmm. these backpacks have this chip on them and the chip actually does all the matrix driving for you. So you just tell the matrix what LEDs you want lit and it does it. And we have a library to use on Arduino. And so you can even just say, print this number and we'll print the number. Like you don't even have to figure out what segments are which. You just say, print the number one, two, three, four, and it will print one, two, three, four, or, you know, 6.381 and it will, and this is number. part of the feather line. This is a feather line. So yeah. we have these as a backpack. What's neat about these is when they're assembled, they plug into a feather. So, for example, on mm -hmm. the overhead, I will Do you want show. me to show these other two photos first? Uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. So, we, you know, this is the, the white one, and then we also have the, um, the red one has a, I think, yeah. maybe that's blue or something. Yeah. It has a, a black background. And um, let's just show it on the overhead, and we'll continue. So this is the... Um, the feather, so this, that's that chip that does the controlling for you. And um, you solder together, you put the backpack on, and then it plugs into any of our feather line boards. So you can use it with uh, ESP8266, at Mega328, M0, SAMD, um, the STM32, you can even use it with a Teensy uh, 3.1 when we get our adapter out. And this is just it, just displaying some numbers, super simple. And then we also have a nice demo here. Let's turn it on off. So this version just shows you the white LEDs, really bright white yeah. LEDs. And I have sockets in this one so I can switch them out for different colors. This is yeah. blue. Everyone always asks, so I'll just go ahead and start like, uh, is there RGB versions of all this? There aren't RGB versions of this. We have a NeoPixel wing that will give you a, a, a bunch of LEDs. You can do it that way. But it's not, you're yeah, not gonna yeah. get, they're not gonna be in segments. These LEDs, these seven segment displays are only available in mono color, pretty much, okay. for, for this size and ease. So this is red. This red is really, really nice. Actually, let me see if I can hold it up. You can see it, Turn even around. on, yeah, just show it on the big screen, because yeah. you can see how visible it is. It's like yeah, pretty easy bright. to see the numbers. Okay. And then um, we also have it uh, set with red. And then I think I already showed that's so green. I already showed green. And then finally we have yellow, which is actually kind of a lovely, it's kind of a saffron orange yellow color. Um, so yeah, you can use these to display clocks or times. And what's neat is it's, um, so this one's the, the socketed version for my ease. But if you use the plain version, it's like exactly the same width. So it's like it fits perfectly on top of um, your feather. And yeah, we've tested it with all uh, different feather wings and it works, uh, feathers, and, and you can um, connect this with other feather wings as well. So it's a great addition to the line. Yeah, how many feather wings are there, you, would you say, right about now? The entire family, I think, is about 30 boards. Okay. I think 10 ish main. 10, 15 main boards and 15 
-hmm. feathers. So we're going to have this, we're going to have hexadecimal, and we're going to have um, matrix, we're going to have Charlie, we're going to have a whole bunch because okay. basically anything that I can put that uses I squared C like this, it will work with all of them, and it's just a great cross-platform okay. plug and play. For these, are there, um, is it just full brightness or off, or can you do any brightness control? You can dim the whole display um, by 16 different levels, mm -hmm. but it dims the entire display. You can't like dim yeah, yeah, yeah. each number. Sense. It's like the whole thing is bright or dim, okay. um, and it, it, it can do some dividing yeah. that way, but it's, it pretty much kind of runs on zones. Kind of, they're kind of tuned for like a very good yeah. look. So other than you know, they're we default to max brightness. So you can always dim them a little bit. Yeah. If you want to have individual control, check out the NeoPixel wing. We'll yeah. also have a, a Charlieplex LED. Okay. Wing. They're a little more and expensive. What are these? These I got two remaining photos. Oh, this is just the kit. So when you buy it, it comes like this. So we give you the backpack, which you can also buy separately if you happen to have already, and the display and some header, and you just do a little bit of soldering, it takes about five minutes, okay. and you'll get your feather wing. So if you already have a feather, this is a great little add-on okay. to create a clock or a number display if you want an internet of things that just displays a number. Like, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, I want a full color display with like thousands, millions of pixels, and like I want a UI and a text screen. Sometimes you're like, no, I just want to display, you know, the number of, minutes it's been since this yeah. last event or how many you know notifications are on this account yeah. or what is the temperature at this remote location you don't want to have anything excessive this is perfect for it very bright very simple easy to read display okay and then uh we have two pi cameras mm, these are updates from the pi foundation uh they have upgraded their cameras to now be eight megapixels so you can use this with any of the pies you get more pixels so this is camera version 2.1 um, it's the same size. I believe it's backwards compatible with all the enclosures and cases that connect with it, but it just uses a new camera module from Sony, I think. And it's, uh, again, 8 megapixels. Okay. We have the old camera still up and on sale. And there's more. Oh, and there's the new IR version, Noir. So if you want to take um, crazy photos during the day with no IR, so you'll get IR sensitivity, or if you want to take night photography, um, you'll flood the area with IR light. This will pick up that light. It will be uh, monochromatic, but you can do night photography. Yeah. So it's kind of a cool hack. Okay. It's black. And the star of the show, besides you, Lady Ada, this week is, it's here. Circuit Playground. Wow, I finished it. <laughs> we had the PCBs for a bit, but I it's actually got them done. So yeah. we did our first batch of about 200 Circuit Playgrounds. And we, uh, these are the developer edition. So we've already come up with some minor tweaks to like the firmware and maybe even some hardware adjustments for the final edition. So this is not the final public release. Yeah. This just I'm just letting people know this is still uh, the developer edition. It's for people who know a little bit of Arduino, who know how to use the Arduino IDE, who if I tell them, hey, you know, we have a Fermata beta, want to upload it and try it out with your. Um, you know, Node.js program or your JavaScript or, you know, try connecting it to Minecraft, you'll be like, yeah, that sounds cool. I know how to do some Python code or compiling or editing as necessary. Um, yeah. We don't have a lot of projects for it yet. We only have the main tutorial. We will have a lot of projects, but we're hoping to get these into the hands of people who um, like building stuff, like building wearables, sensor projects. I just want to give people an introductory about why it's called the Developer Edition. Yeah, and one oh, thing. What is it? Yeah, and and one thing that I want to mention about it being the Developer Edition and, and what your potential impact can be if you were to pick up one of these and do some cool projects with it. So um, I can say for sure, one hundred percent, that these will be in the hands of lots and lots of kids in the USA first, and then around the world. And if you have projects or ideas, or if you see code that needs to be updated or fixed or any type of contribution you want to make to this project. Um, we have a lot of big plans. We're going to be announcing a lot of stuff with this. And there are gigantic educational efforts. And they needed some type of educational platform that was low cost, mm -hmm. high performance, no soldering, works with all different types of online stuff. And we have it. And so just know that you're part of something bigger when you do stuff with Circuit Playground. Yeah, this is this is kind of what we're calling developer edition. This is developer, yeah, just yeah. but um, it but it is pretty much it's, it's like the final and basically it's a round wearable board. Um, you don't have to wear it, but it's designed so you could wear it if you want to. It's it's round. There's no sharp edges. 
and nothing, no snagging components. And it's an all-in-one uh, Arduino compatible. It's a lot like our Flora board that was very popular for wearables. Yeah. It's a little bit bigger, but because it's a little bit bigger, it has a lot of stuff built in. So we added 10 RGB LEDs. So it's just doing a little rainbow pattern, but every LED can be any color you yeah. want. So there are 10 NeoPixels built in. It has a left and right push button. I'll show it's on the overhead too. It has a slide switch, so you can detect slide switching. It has a light sensor. It has a temperature sensor. Go for it. Oh, sorry, I won't show it off. Yeah, so there's uh, 10, I can't plug it in even. There's 10 NeoPixels. Oh, turn off the buzzer. There's uh, 10 NeoPixels that you can control to um, light them up in rainbow colors as you like. There's a light sensor over here, the little eyeball, so it's uh, light sensing. There's a temperature sensor, it's a thermistor, but it's actually quite good. Uh, we add some code for you already, so you can just ask it what's the temperature, it'll give you the temperature in, in Celsius. Uh, there is a sound sensor over here, there's a little ear next to it, and so it can um, do uh, fast forward your transforms or listen to audio, sound pressure level with some filtering. There's two buttons, left and right push buttons for detecting presses. Uh, there's a buzzer, a little note thing, so there's a magnetic buzzer that can play tones, and if I uh, switch this, it will turn on the magnetic buzzer, and it'll make little tones to let you know that it's working. Um, you program it over USB, and it uses an Atmega 32U4, which is an Arduino-compatible chip. It has a bootloader that works with the Arduino IDE, and when you plug it in, you can upload code to it, you can communicate to it, and you can also turn it into a keyboard or mouse, which is kind of neat, so you can have this act like a, a keyboard or mouse if you'd like, or a MIDI device. Um, there's also an accelerometer in the center. This little chip right here is a triple axis accelerometer, so it can detect tilt and motion, and like if you tap it or double tap it, it can detect um, that as well. And um, it uh, has these, um, on the outside, it has these pads that you can connect with an alligator clip. So you have access to power and ground, and you have the hardware uh, pins that are really valuable, like I squared C and UART and analog digital pins. But you can also use them just as GPIO pins or yeah. capacitive touch pins. Each, all eight of these pins can be used for capacitive touch. It has a, a library built into it that can do that. And then you can power it over a battery if you like, or power it over USB. It doesn't have a LiPo charger on purpose because I don't want people to try to charge LiPo batteries yeah. um, while they're wearing it or unattended. I, I thought I wanted to make this as um, kid-friendly as possible. Yeah, and flip it over. So um, it's a nice uh, font and silk. But, done uh, by F FLB. FCC and CE and Rojas, and that's important to us because this is going into schools, and uh, you know we don't necessarily believe that all things need to be made in the USA, but we're proud to say this is made yeah, in made the USA, Yay. made in New York, it's open source, it's FCC, it's CE, and this is going to be in the hands of a lot of kids, and we hope this helps accelerate all of the computer science for all mm -hmm. um, ideas and efforts that lots of companies have. Every week you hear about more money being thrown at, ways to get more and more kids coding, and physical computing is one of the best ways, I believe it is the best way mm -hmm. um, to get there. Yeah, and then on the back, if you're an advanced hacker, these are the uh, ISP pins, so you, if you want to reprogram the chip, go for it. You know, we, we release all the open source code and stuff, it's just the bootloader that we put on the floor, it's the same bootloader, yeah. but if you want to program the chip directly, go to town, but I, this is as much stuff as I could pack into the shape, and I wanted to add more, but we actually had to, you know, we did a bunch of streams where we talked about yeah. trade-offs, like what we could add and how much it costs and like what complexity and, and shape and size. And so, you know, I definitely wanted to add, you know, buttons and a switch because I thought like that's really handy because those are very basic elements. And I thought having a sound sensor and a buzzer is cool because it gives it a lot of interactivity. Yeah. And a temperature sensor and a light sensor are the simplest and lowest cost of sensors. I mean, basically, a light sensor costs five cents and a thermistor costs like two cents. So I was like, ah, you know, it's basically free. Well, how much is this? Uh, it sounds like it's uh, going to be expensive when you, you talk about but all of these things, Lady Ada. How much is it? Ninety-nine. No, no, it's going to be twenty dollars. Wow. So I'm I'm trying to make this. I wish we would have talked about that before you announced it because we can't go back on that now. No, so it's going to be twenty bucks. It's twenty bucks. Wow. Okay. It's twenty bucks. That's it's. I thought the price. It has to be nineteen ninety-five, and so. 
you know, a lot of, again, a lot of choices were made. You know, I had to get the accelerometer. It's a really nice accelerometer that we made a breakout for a few months ago, partially to, to make sure that this was a good one, but it's like a 70 cent accelerometer, you know, but it has triple access and it has like, you know, tap detection and that's really cool. And the NeoPixels, um, they're expensive, but I really wanted to have um, color and And these output. are the NeoPixels that have the black around them. Yeah, right? yeah, they're oh. cool. They're the black plastic ones. So they're, they're super goth. But and, and the JSD connector is black, too. It's black, too. We made it as goth as possible. Oh, if, 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 if uh, Edward Scissorhands' uh, inventor dad still was around. This would be working on. He'd this be working on these. He'd be making these for kids. He'd be making these. Yeah. Anyways. And you goth. know what's cool is a kid can watch the Circuit Playground episodes. They can use the Circuit Playground app, and then they can eventually get the Circuit Playground device. Yeah, Ooh. and I, I'm already thinking about like how am I going to have add-ons like little shields that screw in with standoffs, like metal standoffs, mm. so you can add like a little OLED display maybe or other sensors or maybe like Bluetooth energy or Wi-Fi. Like I'm, I'm starting to think about it like it, you yeah. know, it might be something that plugs onto the back and then you attach through these holes like it snaps into place to add Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, but um, I think this is a pretty good start. Like I already have Tony DeCole, I remember he visited. Um, back then, that was like Maker Fair. That yeah. was in September, and we started drafting ideas for um, for yeah. this. And it took a while to, to get it to this to this point, but trying to get as many projects as possible that people like to build, and making sure that this hardware can build all, can can use it. So like, yeah. one we well, need to look back a year from now. All the things that's happening with Circuit Playground. Yeah, I think I think one year from now we'll look back and we'll be like, wow, we have like you know fifty tutorials. So there's going to be a lot of recreations. Like um, the Amplitai project is a project that we can redo with this. Yeah. So there's a lot of flora projects, maybe like the Sparkle Skirt. These are projects that you can do using um, this all-in-one board. That's what I tried to do, the most popular tutorials, but yeah. in a board that is, is 20 bucks. So, Gothtronics. It's here. It's happening. Gothtronics. You know, this is, look, it's, this is what I'm, I'm here for. This is my, okay. this is my job. So, All right, Lady Ada, that was... New products. Good work. <laughs> <laughs>